Welcome to the Transforming Assessment webinar series. This is the of August. Today's speaker is Associate Professor Lisa T from Curtin University, and she's going to be talking about the My, My Course Map. So, Lisa, would you like to begin, please? Yes, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Now, thank you, welcome, and thank you, everyone, for making time to participate in this webinar. And I know we are all very busy people, so thank you for making time. Now, my first question to everyone is this. Are we there yet in making our curriculum visible to students and even to our staff, the new member of staffs? So for the students, they will be asking, are we there yet? Wanting to know the relevance of what they are, going, they are learning or going to be learning and the connection of what they are learning to employability. So. I created the My Course Map to increase transparency of curriculum to students and staff, and also to help prospective students make informed decision of their chosen program study. So let me see, working this thing, the next slide. So I have been uh, very fortunate indeed to have achieved the Australian National Teacher Fellowship in 2016. And that was the last year the Australian government uh, is offering the national fellowship. So I take this as an opportunity that here's my chance to generate and also to stimulate a national. And now that we have international representation here in this forum, also to initiate the international conversation around how to better communicate and engage our students in the program of study. And to keep asking, you know, if we are there yet in making our curriculum intent visible to students. Another aim is to increase the transparency and relevance of uh, curricula and uh, graduate capabilities for students. So, as we know, universities have recognized the value and importance of graduate skills, but are these visible to our students? So since 2013, when the My Cosmet tool was developed, and now with this fellowship, the tool is available for pilot across institution. And the My Cosmet tool is built on digital touch technology and is accessible through all mobile devices. So what really drives the development of My Cosmet? I'm crazy. I'm passionate about teaching. Having over 25 years of academic and leadership experience, I'm passionate about enhancing uh, learning, leveraging on technology. We are in the um, <laughs> we are in the uh, digital age, um, anyway, isn't it? So, Matthew said, last but not least. Um, okay. So, in my academic leadership roles, I'm totally aware of the relentless effort of academics in developing um, and designing what they think is the best curriculum and graduate attributes for students. But the trouble is, all these are not readily accessible to students and even to staff members. So being positioned at the core phase of teaching, I hear students' aspiration. I also hear their frustrations. So I ask, why are students not provided with information of the whole course at the point of enrollment? Surely that will provide students uh, with a clear vision of their program of study, uh, showing relevance of what they are learning, and also they are able to form an identity of their chosen profession. So maybe at this stage, rather than babbling along, if you can get your whole ready, so can I ask you, are your students able to easily assess information of the entire course at the point of enrollment? Could you do a poll at this stage? Okay, so 11 people say no. Wow, oh, okay. So there you go. See, at Curtin University, the students will be given you know, information semester by semester. So why, why can't they have a better idea of how each uh, unit is into the next? Anyway, as you know, education costly and, 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 and both monetary and time has making informed decision or choice of study is important. Knowing the relevance of study is important. Guess what? Making wrong decision is costly. So let's move on. Okay, here is uh, my great, great pleasure to be able to introduce my um, fellowship champions. 
I can see a few in in this uh, forum at the moment. I could see uh, Simon, Simon Bedford, uh, Tin Face Sim, Billy Croft, welcome Julie. And so these are my champions. So it's, it's great to be working with like-minded colleagues who share my passion, you know, here. And um, so this is a representation of um, champions from Western Australia, Melbourne, Brisbane, New South Wales, and Adelaide. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, champions. And so Simon, Simon is uh, from University of Wollongong. He will join us shortly to present, or he's here, but he will then shortly present a case study of how they they use the MyCosNAP in um, reporting, curriculum reporting, and engagement with the teaching team. So out with all ways, and in comes the MyCosNAP way. So we'll hear from Simon in a little while. So, so when you start at uni, where would you get information? So this is these are the students. So my husband, at the age of sixty, has just gone back to uni. So I guess it's never too late to go back to uni. So for the students, do they know how each subject is related to the next? Do they know about graduate skills? Do they know how important the skills are to career success? So those are big questions. And so at this stage. I would like to start um, this uh, academic conversation of how to increase visibility of curriculum intent to students. Now, before I start chatting with you and getting everybody to contribute, first I must clarify some terminology regarding degree. So in Australia, we have some university will call a degree a program, and some will call it a course. So. Perhaps if you can um, get to the chat, and if you could uh, let us know, you know, in your institution, what would you call a degree? Is it a course, a degree, a program, or even a degree? Okay, Alan, you call it a course, program, program. Yep. So, so there you go. You can see that you know some people call it a course, program. For the sake of consistency, I'm going to call it a, a course here. Okay, from now on. So the first question for everyone, okay, you can um, use a poll now, is uh, in your institution or for your course, are students aware of the importance of course learning outcome or are they even aware that they exist? So I've got one who say no, two who say no. Okay, so pretty good, five say yes. Mm -hmm. So we're even now. Okay, really good. So I'm glad to see that um, you know, ten ten of you have said that they, they they know. Okay, that's very good, very good. I like to hear that. What about the next question? Are students aware of the importance of graduate skills for success? So that's the next question. Yeah, not all the time. They assume they'll get them by doing the degree. Yeah, but don't you think that in one of the study we asked the first year student, "Do you know anything about graduate uh, attribute skills?" Look at us, blank face. Then that's fine. But when you ask the fourth year students about graduate skills, they they will be uh, most of them will be saying, "If only we know better. If only we are aware of this earlier before the uh, the placement." Yeah. Okay, patchy depending on the course. Exactly, it really does lean. It does depend on the course, um, and depending on the unit coordinator, the course coordinator as well, isn't it? Mm. So, Megan, you say why? Why is it important? Well, there are universities who have gone to the big trouble of setting up some graduate skills that they that is absolutely important for graduate success. Yeah. Mm. So the next question is. How does your institution present course information? So you can put that in the chat. So are they in brochures, web pages? Yeah. Are they easily accessible though, the web pages? Ooh, Akari. But is Akari easily accessible to student though, Simon? Hmm. Very good. I can see quite a lot of uh, variation. Hmm. Handbook. Yes. Currently PDF, okay. Mm -hmm. Web pages. 
But how easy is it to get information to the online course handbook? How easy is it to get the whole picture? Okay, okay, thanks Alistair. I will uh, have a look at that, that web link. Okay, finally, finally, um, could I ask you, um, what do you hope to gain out of attending this webinar? So maybe I could address some of your, your wish list. <laughs> so what would you wish to gain out of this uh, the webinar? Anybody? <laughs> Embedding tips. Okay, I'm reviewing the whole course and I want to see clearly how it's presented. Okay, user friendly way of giving ideas. Okay, user friendly, I like that. Awareness of how and how the link importance. Yep. Thanks, Melinda. How to get students to realize the importance. That's so important. How to engage senior leadership. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Okay, while you keep going, I'm going to keep going and uh, present. So, here we are. The last, so here we are. Um, let me have a look. So here we are. We are at the um, uh, at the at age, the digital age. So the landscape of education has changed significantly with disruptive technology. Do you agree that we are in a disruptive technology? I can see this as an opportunity, really as an opportunity to enhance education for contemporary students. So higher education is under constant surveillance of, uh, of the national regulatory body for quality assurance. So in Australia, we have the TAXA, which is the Tertiary Education Quality and Standards Agency. So and also there's a requirement to comply with uh, Australian framework. I'm sure in, in international, um, you have similar body over there and also accreditation standards. So um, so we do have international participants here. So just uh, asking the international participants, do you have similar regulatory body over in your country? And what are they, please? Okay. So and also, so you come from Spain, you have no idea. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alistair, QA, okay, Quality Assurance Agency. That's in the UK, yeah, as mm -hmm. All right. So university ranking is based on student satisfaction. I'm sure it's, it's the same international as well. And also dependent on uh, how successful is the year we want to mission graduate success. So my question is, does our students have the required graduate skills for successful transition into employment? So put, to put it down, play, are the employers satisfied with our students? So at this stage, uh, I'd like to introduce to you um, some of my Australian Learning and Teaching Fellows, uh, uh, Beth, um, Eva, Dawn, Jessica and Rue. All, all these Australian Learning and Teaching Fellows, they are engaging in the important areas of graduate capabilities and employability. So there's that synergistic sort of project that's happening at this moment in time. So I'd just like to introduce um, uh, all, all my colleagues here and could access information at the um, ALTF website. So in terms of graduate skills, why is it so important? University recognize and develop graduate skills. And, and so these are the must-have skills for graduate success. But again, are they visible to the students? I mean, they are the one who needs them. Um, so in our study, in our study, we, we ask graduates, we ask the employers, we ask teaching teams, so these are three stakeholders, about their view on the importance of these generic skills. So guess what? All the three stakeholders did say, yes, they are important. So you can see on the left hand side, the graduates in blue, the um, employers in, in red and then the, the cost team in green. So they all said they're important. Now, when, but when we ask if students have demonstrated those skills, both the employers and the teaching team feel the students are not doing too well. But the students seem to think that they are actually doing okay. <laughs> so do you think this is a problem? 
the students are thinking that they're fine, but the employers are sometimes not too happy. So in my role, uh, in my previous role, role as the Director of Teaching and Learning in the School of Pharmacy at Curtin University, I always made myself available during the orientation uh, at day one, you know, the students' uh, orientation. This is when they walk up to the university. And quite often, when I see a student sitting on their own, I would chat with them and ask if they're excited about commencing uh, the family course. And this is what most students would say. Now, I'm excited about getting to uni, very happy to be accepted into the pharmacy course, but um, they are not sure of what to expect. Indeed, for some, it's a little bit scary. So then, this is my light bulb moment. So I felt that we need to make it more visible to students. So I created the visual my course map, as you can see here. It is a tree map. And it was for use for marketing and presented as posters. So my vision is that each of these button, if you were to click onto those button, each of this button here, it should come to life when you click onto it, and there'll be information of that particular subject that you need. There'll be videos of students talking about that particular subject to motivate and inspire students. So, so the my course match should have the capacity to inform, inspire, engage students. And, um, and also enhancing the professional identity development. So one day, I showed it to a secondary student. And I said to the student, you know, how would you feel if you have something like that, which is interactive, and uh, you can hear students talking about that particular subject, and employers talking about that particular career. How would you feel? And so the student said this, to be able to see the entire course map and listening to students talking about the units, you will increase their com her confidence. And with increased confidence, she will perform better. That's really quite good. And I really like that. So what is a my course map concept? So when, I, when it was developed, it was based on the fact that um, we like to see uh, for it to be a one port, one stop portal for course information, rather than scrummaging over the, the the internet on the online course handbook to be able to get all the course information in the one portal to show immediate relevance. There'll be that horizontal and also vertical integration of curriculum, which is what we academic staff building the curriculum. You know, we we, we look at it, vertical integration, horizontal in integration, having the holistic view but are they visible to, to students and staff? And also to have um, the My Course Map embed with, um, with videos of uh, from peers, from graduates and employers telling them, uh, sharing their stories and, and, and hopeful, hopefully will motivate and bias other students. And also to have a feature where it can link the learning outcome to assessment, acknowledging that assessment drives learning. And, um, Yes, I, I, you're right, uh, Matthew. You know the the whole connection are somewhat um, hidden from staff. And what about graduate capability and linking to employability? I think this is where the missing link is. You know, and through my evaluation and focus group discussion, um, some have said that it's one tool many uses. So indeed, I I see this as a portal or perhaps as a Star Wars fan. I'm a mad Star Wars fan. <laughs> I see this as a mothership, right? It's a docking station for any learning and teaching resources, such as virtual to gamification or whatever, to be docked onto this interactive course map. So, yeah. Just to show you and to share with you the My Course Map journey, um, it, it really started with the need for myself. I needed to see where I'm. You know, I'm teaching pharmacology in, in pharmacy. I really needed to know where my subject is sitting in the big scheme of things. So I started this uh, 2D map, and then uh, the next was uh, to, to consult students and staff. And most have encouraged me to say, "Yeah, keep going, Lisa." You know, and I was saying that you know I love to develop an app and say, "Yeah, it will be useful." So the next is to develop the proof of concept. So I proof of concept. I get my team here. So this is the research and evaluation team. So Faye is in this uh, forum. So hi, Faye. And um, so information from the proof of concept, then first 
um, is used for to refine the Mark II, my Cosmap uh, version number two. So the version number two will be accessible in all devices. The proof of concept was accessible uh, on the um, only on the iPad. So from feedback, the Mark II, the Mark II is then built on. Uh, on the, uh, the the tool such that it is accessible for devices, mobile devices. So this is the proof of concept. It's really pretty, but from our feedback, we're told not to have this and that and that. So um, anyway, I'll talk about that in a little while. So this is our proof of concept, and it should have the capability of uh, all these interactive buttons. You can drill down by the year group, by the discipline type, uh, prerequisite, and, and cost link outcome and attributes. So we conducted a few, of, uh, we conducted a few focus group uh, workshop, and so this is uh, what the students and staff said about my course map. They like the idea that curriculum is all in one place. And um, they also like the idea that um, it is uh, user friendly, easy to navigate, and for students, they value that it is useful for planning ahead. And the staff value it as a modern technology, better than brochures or stacks of, of uh, paper. And some identify that it has multiple use, some say it might be useful for coordination, remediation of students, and all that. And um, this is uh, some of the comments so some students have said it's visually simple, easy to navigate. Um, they can see the relevance of what they're learning. They can plan ahead. And for the staff member, they like that it is really appealing to the current generation of students, a lot better than a piece of brochure, and, and also useful for curriculum builders. So, so those are all the uh, some of the quote of the uh, from the focus group discussion. Now, this information is available. Is available has been disseminated in the um, Escalite uh, meeting in 2015, and I believe um, Matt, you have circulated this paper to all participants. Anyway, if you if you wish to receive a copy, we can uh, circulate that to you as well. So a lot of talking now. So let me um, introduce to you the my cost map version number two. So this is an example of the uh, Bachelor of uh, uh, Bachelor of Nursing uh, My Course Map. It is uh, so it is an interactive course guide, and with the aim to inform and inspire our students, and also featuring mainly um, a portal uh, uh, at a glance portal. It should be intuitive, so easy to use and visually rich interactive unit pages and main thing is that it can be used for all courses by all course providers and accessible on all mobile devices. So before I go live and get to the website just to show you some features. So here based on the focus group discussion on the uh, from the proof of concept People has value, both students and staff have value having this uh, home page. They like having this home page and it becomes the navigation page as well. And so here you have the navigation panel and also the navigation panel on the top. Can everybody see the arrow that I'm moving around? Can you see the arrow? I've been moving the, the arrow. Oh, no, you haven't. Okay. Sorry, I've been moving these arrows and nobody can see. <laughs> All right, the purple panel on the right. <laughs> okay, so the purple panel on the right is the uh, navigation page, and then the ochre color on the top panel is another navigation page. Okay. So the next, um, the, on the right hand side will be the curriculum map, the Microsoft map. So that is the interactive map. So when you click on the purple panel, my course map, you should be able to get to to the uh, to the, uh, the the my course map. Okay. 
So, for instance, by clicking the subject unit, you should be able to see the information of the unit. The little dot um, showing the graduate attributes, videos, and also assessment. <laughs> yes, um, now who did that talk to Sheffield? Yes, um, get in touch with me and we'll see how we can get you to try at Sheffield. <laughs> and um, let me, maybe I should really go. So, this is where you can fit the graduate attributes. Also, the program learning outcome can have videos of students and motivating other students, can show prerequisite and requisite, also the industry story. And so, what I'll do now is to share with you. I'll go live and get so that you can see what I mean by all this interactive. Thanks, Nabil. Impressive. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, it's coming along. So I'm sharing, sharing. Okay, renew, resume, sharing, sharing. Come on, share. Oopsie. Sharing, sharing. Ah. Sharing. What do you mean by post sharing? Okay, now. Okay, Megan, so your physiotherapy course, okay? Yep. Let's get in touch. And then uh, I could also potentially hold another seminar, a webinar to guide people on how to use it at the back end. We can potentially uh, do that. Now, why is this not coming? Matt, why is um, this not I coming? Lisa, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, yeah. I think it got stuck from sharing last time. Let me just try to stop sharing and then see if you can start. Mm -hmm. So let me just set it up. Now you See if you can try again pressing the double double screen yes, icon. Double screen. Ah, got you. Right, okay. Now choose the yeah. screen for your yeah. web browser. Okay, okay well, there you go. Fabulous. So this is an example. Actually, I'll, I'll move on to the nursing one. So this is an example of the Bachelor of Nursing at Curtin University. So here, as I've said, you can see this is the navigation page. That's also navigation. So you can go to my course map from here or from there. And this is the welcome page that um, the staff and student has valued. And of course, you can put in whatever you want in terms of uh, showcasing that particular course. So let's go to the my course map. So here, you put by years and uh, and also you can do it by if there's within your discipline, within your course, there are different, different streams, you know, so you could drill it by that. So the students see the relevance of how one unit is linked to the next. And the other thing that is useful is the graduate attribute. So where is the technology skills embedded? Accessing information, professional skills, the international skills, and all that. And you could also go to those individual units. And here is the title of that unit. It will tell you what semester it is, whether it's call, and what sort of stream it is within that unit. That is the code for that particular subject. And look, you see here, these are all the range of attributes that it is has been embedded in this particular unit. And also, if that will be the slide I'm going to find for you. And this is uh, the videos. And further down, you could also see the tuition pattern, whether it's the online class or workshop, the the learning outcome for this particular unit or subject, and the assessment breakdown. So in the future, um, I would like to see, you know, on the click of this particular assessment, which are the learning outcome is is it been assessed? That has been assessed. Okay. And up here you could also inform students of the different type of what, what it means by all these icons. And of course you have the flexibility to add more to provide information about the the that particular graduate attributes. And also if, if there's any other information you could add to that as well. Now moving on to the Bachelor of Pharmacy program. So here you can even have what the students say. So first year, um, second year, third year, and fourth year. And also the role of that particular, you know, as a role of pharmacist, 
what are some career opportunities, and what are some professional options. So, okay. So this, in a nutshell, that's what it looks like. So without going, um, with, I'm happy to showcase this again later on, but now I'd like to pass to Simon. Simon, are you there? <laughs> I am here. Waiting so, patiently. Waiting patiently. There you go, Simon. You have got plenty of time. <laughs> well, according to this, I've got minus five minutes. But okay, excellent. That's always a good start. Uh, welcome, yeah. everyone. So the slides are working. So I guess I've known Lisa for about a year. So we've been we met at her to 2016 when she demonstrated my course map, and um, I've been working as one of the champions utilising that, uh, in particular in a uh, psychology course cluster reviews. So, uh, my focus is. Um, assessment and feedback and I'm also now the head of curriculum design and development unit so we work very closely with courses redesigning subjects redesigning uh, uh, courses and assessments um, and this is just a brief run through of how we use my course map for, for this okay oh that's a horrible picture there you go hello that's me um, so what happened was we were looking very much at um, course reviews and we'd hope that our new curriculum management system which is called ACARI would identify a, a, cor a, a course uh, mapping uh, system. Unfortunately that doesn't come with a curriculum or course mapping uh, system with it. So this is why we got uh, into a discussion with either about using my course map. So you can see for the uh, psychology course classes they had quite a difficult year in 2016-2017, it's almost at the end. So what they had to actually do is undergo a course review uh, with the Australian Psychological Accreditation Council, so a re-accreditation. Um, so that meant one particular audience that they had to deliver to, to those re-accreditation standards. Also in Australia, for our uh, non-Australian uh, uh, participants, we've just introduced a new set of standards, which is the Higher Education uh, uh, Threshold Standard, which we're looking at at the moment, which came in in January 2017. Now, one of those requirements is, of course, external referencing assessment standards. So now every course needs to be referenced with comparable courses across Australia. That's so about a bit like the UK external uh, examining system. Um, so they had to do a different audience for that. And then things got a little worse because uh, number three is the annual comprehensive reviews. Every five years, courses are reviewed. Um, again, that's assessments to subject learning outcomes, course level learning outcomes, and viability of a particular course. And it includes our new curriculum transformation. So again, what we look there at is first year experience. We look at a portfolio throughout the course. We look at the balance of online and face-to-face -face, uh, activities. We look at capstone experiences towards the end and connections across curricula. And then finally, because we are the only second institution to go underneath the new standards, so that's uh, via TEXA, um, only four courses were choos chosen at UOW to actually report back to TEXA against the Higher Educated Standards Framework, and poor old psychology got chosen again. So this is one of the reasons that we uh, chose one to have go at with uh, my course map, because there was a whole range of different stakeholders, a range of audiences where we had to articulate the current course structure, what were its benefits, what were its attributes, etc., um, how students were demonstrating attainment of course level learning outcomes, how they were gaining employability skills, how they were gaining professional skills throughout those three to four years of study. So what we did throughout the last year or so is we've been doing a lot of work with mapping, we've been doing construct alignment and building their actual curriculum maps up. So we've been looking at core and elective subjects throughout that course cluster. We've been doing alignment of uh, the course level learning outcomes with the new APAC accreditation standards, so that's one set of alignments. Up to uh, the Australian Qualifications Framework, so now that external kind of reference point. And then down throughout the course alignment of those 
course level learning outcomes with subject level learning outcomes, how the assessments actually allow students to demonstrate those learning outcomes, mapping of the curriculum model, and of course those professional skills of a psychology student would hopefully demonstrate at the end of that course uh, um, those professional skills such as uh, statistical literacy, good communication, etc. and English language policy, in other words, how their languages uh, develop. And within that kind of context, I'll move on to the star, this looks good, uh, there were some key, uh, key changes. So the professional body, APAC, changed their standards just at the optimum time, and we really didn't want them to do that. Um, we had to design a new set of course level learning outcomes uh, had to be created, so to align to those and align back through the set of learning outcomes. So that meant rewriting many of those. Uh, and of course, looking at the assessments and looking very carefully at which ones were still appropriate, which ones need to be modified. Um, and in particular, we ended up building a number of new subjects. So again, we're moving from eight credit points to six credit points. So there's a big problem with all of this. We had those four areas of focus, the professional accreditation standards, the referencing of assessments across courses across Australia, uh, reviewing curriculum transformation, and of course, providing a report to text that our course is delivering what we said it did. How are we going to kind of gather that data together? How are we going to share that data with many, many stakeholders, uh, the school of psychology, students, and the external providers? So where we started was where most people start, either a kind of spreadsheet or a particular visualization. So we actually did this in Word. And I think this goes on something like six pages, which I won't bore you with uh, at this day. But we have all our subjects. We have all our SLOs, our CLOs, or our assessments. Um, so this is a typical subject. We have our SLOs. We have our APAC accreditation standards. We have our new course learning outcomes. And you can see that it's a main field. You can maybe put all the information into one place. You can't really see any problems. You can't the end of the things that you might want to put in for the particular assessments and make life very, very difficult. So we migrated across to um, our spreadsheet tool. And again, that was much better. So okay, it's a little bit blurry, but you can kind of see the various weeks here. You can see how the subjects uh, build up within the actual course kind of structure. You can see some of the assessment here, the weighting of the assessment. And this screen is probably most important because you can now see where those course level learning outcomes here are being introduced in the sort of course, developed in the course, and matured in the course. And one thing that struck us just at this stage was, of course, an awful lot of those course level learning outcomes were being matured in just one subject. So this is Psych 3 by 4, over and over and over and over again. But again, there was a lot of information in here, and we weren't actually clear we're picking up all the things that we want to review and change. Oops. And along came Lisa and along came uh, my course map. Now this is not an interactive one as I can't really show you kind of what's going on but what we were able to do was put all that information into one particular uh, uh, area. It allowed us to sh share that area. Uh, with it, all those stakeholders. We had the uh, CLOs, the SLOs, the APAC accreditation standards, put it all in one particular place in my course map. Uh, as Lisa's already showed, it pulls assessment weights together, puts all those assessments into the system. Um, it maps the curriculum transformation project and things like ELP together. You can see here, this is English language policy, so we can see where within the course that's starting to be introduced, developed, and assured. Uh, we can see the core skills we'd require of our psychology students. So here they are, there's clinical, there's statistical methods. And in our map, we can start to see that there's a clear backbone within the course where those have been developed. We can map our curriculum model. So here's our capstones, here's our connections, here's our hybrid learning, here's our first year experience. We can see that actually changing on the map. So again, it makes it very, very clear. Again, we can click on electives, we can click on core, and that again flagged up the issue, if I can find it somewhere here, it's a bit blurry, blurry. Uh, Psych 354, uh, again, was the only subject, the only course subject that all those students took where we could actually demonstrate a tenth co uh, course level learning outcomes. And that was an issue. And again, we could use uh, the visualization very simply to identify another subject which wasn't core, but actually had all the course level learning outcomes being tested within it. And this is now being developed as a capstone experience for this particular course. So again, it allowed that analysis to uh, occur. 
but primarily because this is actually constructed through a student's department's approach, the students actually did an awful lot of this work because uh, they need to uh, uh, be aware of what's kind of going on and we were able to share this with staff, the students and those external bodies with it. Click, timing is going. Okay, so just to kind of finish off what it is uh, next. Well, we've done the course review. The team have actually finished the evaluation reports. Um, there's a range of recommendations that have been proposed. So, of course, the next batch of course review is actually the much more important one, and that is uh, re uh, actual refresh of your course. We have a new set of assessments. We have have uh, some subjects still to redesign and being proposed. And what we're going to use my course map for, of course, is we have this thing course and we have the proposed new course. And we can now start to see how we're going to build that throughout the next uh, two to three years, uh, to deliver a much better coherent course where we can have the curriculum model action embedded within it. Um, and of course, when we come to reporting TEXA in a, uh, a few years' time, we can actually say, well, yes, we had some issues, we have some problems, and we've now redesigned our course appropriately to deliver those uh, 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 outcomes. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to hand back to Lisa because I think I've probably taken more than my fair share of those five minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. That is, that's brilliant. Very clear. Now, this is the last slide, really. Um, so, Simon, do you agree out with all the way and income the my cost might bring? You reckon so? Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm also thinking about accreditation. You know, when you're preparing for accreditation, the specs and text of those unit outlines and, and, and all those. So out with the old, you know, the papers and then in come the my cosmet way. During site visit, accreditation panel coming through, they can have maybe an iPad with with the cost information at the touch of a button. So. So hopefully the my cost map can solve some of these problems. So instead of chopping so many trees and piles of papers, we can then replace it with a digital portal for cost information. So this is it. And with that, I would like to conclude that I'm hoping that all of us in this room, there are 38 of us, fabulous. So let's get the conversation going you know are we there yet in making curriculum visible um to to students and also to our staff member what about sessional staff within your institution do you engage sessional staff so how okay somebody was asking how how fast it takes now kristen kristen sim is my ra who has been helping others to put together the my cost maybe kristen you can answer those questions because um, I think the time it takes is really for the people who decide on what information they are gathering. Really is the time it takes to gather those information. And once the data is there, entering the data doesn't take very long. Do you agree, Simon? You got somebody over there? Oh, um, yes. Sorry, I, I, I turned my microphone off just for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is gathering the data. Um, I've been working with quite a few people uh, who have uh, one expressed interest in piloting the my cost map, and main problem is the data. Where do they get the data from? And gathering those data. Once they have the data, and I do have a spreadsheet for you to enter the data, you can then enter that from the back end. I mean, this this is the current version. My my sort of um, vision, you know, the the, the the, my, my big vision is that one day this my cost map um, will be able to extract information from the university database and should automate it. So please uh, start the conversation about, you know, we should get our students to have access to all those information. It will increase their, you know, ex learning experience, enhance learning experience. So as part of my fellowship, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, making the Microsoft app tool available for pilot and hopefully out of the pilot I'll be able to create version Mark 3 which can be integrated into the, the, the university system. And let's generate this community of actors to address the important issue, important issue of engaging our students with the curricula within and beyond my fellowship. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, is there any question for me? And teachers work simultaneously from their offices on it. Yeah, definitely. 
So Simon, you did have a few people helping you with your course map. So you nominated three people helping you. So they were able to um, enter the data simultaneously. Correct. Yes, it was good. Um, no, sorry, much so. Uh, um, I think one thing that you may need to mention is how it's built. It's built using um, a, a pretty reliable kind of system, so it's a pretty great. robust, um, a robust system. So yeah, um, we had three people entering it, we had a student entering uh, entering it, and I was collecting the data, so it was pretty well. I do have. Um I do have a website and which I'll circulate um, to everyone. I also would uh, you know, appreciate if you could um, uh, complete a small survey for me and Krista will send it around to everyone. So yeah. And thanks Debbie for, for attending. Um, good to see you again. <laughs> Um, can I just say thanks, Lisa, um, and for everybody to please complete my personal <laughs> feedback survey. Um, Lisa, if you would like to to give the feedback survey, um, I'm not sure you'll get your email address, but I can probably send it to a list of people who had registered for the session. Yes, um, yes, And that be might great. be a way of getting out. We'll also yes. have it up on the recording, so there'll be a recording page there as well. We'll put the link to the My Horse Map website and potentially some of the examples that have seen today as well. So the pharmacy and the psychology examples, I think we should be able to link directly to them if I'm if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we'll have a link to the Appalite paper as well. So if if, if um, anyone who is interested in um, in piloting, do let us know. Kristen uh, Zeman is my RA. She's also in this forum, so we'll we'll see what we can do to help. Thanks, Chet. <laughs> okay, Mabel. Um, thanks for your expression of interest, in Bill, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll have a chat. Yep. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Um, it might be a good idea if people look up uh, Lisa's uh, Lisa T at Curtin University, um, so that you can find Lisa's email and contact her directly. That could be perhaps the most efficient way of this. Yeah, and also I have uh, the my Cosnet website. But, yep. Uh, yeah. My email is uh, quite simple. <laughs> it's at curti.edu.au. Short and sweet. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll think of, you know, on the recording page, there'll be a link to your um, curtain profile as well. So people okay, will be able to you. find you mm -hmm. through the recording system. Ah, as well. thanks. Oh, thanks, James. Great. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, of course. Mycoursemap.net.au. Yes. That is my website. It's still under construction. <laughs> I'm hoping to um, put in a video of of the map uh, for people to see. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Alista. I hope um, there'll be more people using it. I, I feel that uh, you know education is so costly, and um, I, I do have a personal uh, experience. Before I went to the UK to study. I, I was very interested in medicine, so I asked. Uh, I was working with a doctor, and I said, "What's the difference between pharmacology and pharmacy?" And he said to me, "No difference." So guess what? I I, I put in pharmacy, pharmacology, and in the end, I got a placement for pharmacology, and I didn't realize that it's different from pharmacy. <laughs> so it's not pharmacy, but still, I'm happy to be pharmacologist. <laughs> Lisa, that is such a fun story. <laughs> you know what, my poor dad, my poor dad You ended up doing something completely different than you thought it was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I almost didn't get a pay. So in the end, I went to the D University and I thought I was doing pharmacy. And then somebody mm. from down south came up to Dundee to say, oh, I don't like pharmacy, I do pharmacology. I said, what? You know, this is not pharmacy. <laughs> and my poor dad is you know, waiting for me to get back to Malaysia to open, you know, he was ready to open a pharmacy for me, but because pharmacology is not pharmacy. But guess what? I really enjoy the pharmacy. <laughs> but guess what? I'm back to the School of Pharmacy. I'm teaching the pharmacist. <laughs> so that's all good. <laughs> that all works out in the end, doesn't it? <laughs> all works out in the end. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to close off the session now. Um, just again, thanks, Lisa. Uh, so thanks, everyone. Session. Yeah. Um, and also Simon, <laughs> thank you very much for your, your extra uh, value add to the session. That was great. Um, so I'm going to shut off the recording and 
Uh, we'll see you all again uh, in about a month's time for the next webinar. So thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, thank you, Matt. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Simon. Bye. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>